uh, what? That's the reception you're going to get when you watch this film. This is a Geek Legion of Doom review of Iron Man, The Rise of Techno 4. So yes, there's actually two Iron Man films being released in 2013. Um, obviously Iron Man 3. And then you have Iron Man, The Rise of Techno 4, which is a anime um, movie based on the um, anime TV series that's obviously running in Japan, which I think is available in the US as well. So this was produced by, uh, I think it's Madhouse Studios, uh, obviously in Japan. Um, now, before I get into this, this review, uh, I'm not the, the biggest anime fan to start with, so I, I'll get that out there now. Uh, I, you know, I, I have liked some anime in the past and, um, you know, I've, I've uh, been involved with people who are, who are big anime fans. So, you know, I've watched a reasonable amount, but I don't ch tend to choose to watch it these days all that often. But being a bit of a Marvel fan, I thought I'd give this one a go. Um, so this, this film is, is great in some area or one particular area and then, well, I really terrible in others. So the area that it's good at, it looks fantastic. Um, the graphics on this, this production look amazing. I think the animation is excellent. It's, it's frantic, it's kinetic. Um, so it looks fantastic, but it is a classic tale of style over substance. So um, the plot, it starts off kind of fairly, fairly standard. Um, you've basically got uh, Iron Man, uh, Tony Stark, sort of like messing around racing War Machine and some canyons. And basically they're, they're, they're just about to launch um, a, a big sort of satellite, which is going to be kind of like an early sort of danger detection, detection system, basically, that's going to kind of try and prevent sort of incidents, you, you know, around the world from happening kind of just at their inception and things like that. So then the, the, the base is attacked it's just by the launch by um, some sort of other sort of mech warriors type things. And those obviously being uh, being from Japan, you, you've kind of got that kind of Japanese sort of like mecha kind of look to them. Um, now, then you've also got, uh, they, they kind of sort of say that, oh, you know, you haven't met our boss yet. And, um, their boss is kind of this this uh, this character that's kind of like um he looks a bit like raiden from the uh, from the latest metal gear solid game i think um and he's kind of the the kind of the main bad guy if you like and um now that there may be some mild spoilers here so i'll, I'll try and keep it from, from from any major ones but there will be a couple of mild ones starting with um this this uh this being is has got kind of this like almost like a biomechanical armor that's far more advanced than anything sort of tony stark you know has, has, has seen and he basically sort of destroys everyone in the um in this sort of like satellite launch system uh it's got a base thing along with a close friend of tony stark's so you know he sort of iron man kind of barely makes it out alive and he exchanges some words with this character. Um, then he's sort of hauled in by S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, you've got Nick Fury there, Maria Hill, sort of, um, you know, berating Iron Man or Tony Stark, basically sort of saying, well, you're the, you know, you're the only witness and stuff, blah, blah, you need to kind of stay, you know, stay in, in this helicarrier or what have you. But he decides, no, he's not going to do that, because obviously this is um, Tony Stark talking about and decides to investigate things in his own. And uh, this leads him to, um, with the help of Pepper Potts, this leads him to track down AIM, uh, where he also meets up with the Punisher, just on who's randomly sort of searching for uh, the sort of same sort of thing as well. And there's a, kind of, a couple of scenes in the Punisher. I'll come back to the Punisher in a little bit. Um, this eventually leads into this, this character that, that it turns out is uh, Ezekiel Stain. Now, if you recognise the last name, Stain being obviously Obadiah Stain. So this is Obadiah Stane's son, Ezekiel. And he's kind of got this, um, they call it the, the, the technobore in the title, is this kind of technology really that is almost like like a, like a biological cells type of things that are sort of, that he uses to sort of um, take over machinery uh, and, and it makes his kind of armor. And and then this is where it's just, it gets very, what I would consider typical sort of, anime where it just doesn't make much sense um 
he's kind of got this 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 plot plot basically to sort of ultimately take over the world and kind of you know put this kind of like this technology everywhere and essentially kind of wipe out the human race or what have you but it's a very very sort of um the motivations are very kind of like sort of sketched over and doesn't really make a lot of sense to me you know so iron man has this kind of face off with him basically and it kind of you know eventually sort of temporarily overpowers him and they take it back to the, the you know the shield heli carrier and then basically you're going to into you know as i say again real animated hatchery and he basically turns into a huge tentacle monster and it just gets a bit a bit too out there a bit too silly for me and now i won't go too much more much more into, into the plot than that because um i know it's just a new release i know quite a lot of people haven't probably seen it just yet but the the main issues of this film is that it just it just doesn't really make a lot of sense um the, the the plot is just so it starts off okay i guess I mean, it's you know but it just the the motivations of the characters just seem so like bizarre and kind of just out there and and then the things that people are saying and doing just don't make a lot of sense to me so you know it's it, it kind of got a little bit tedious to watch to be honest with you about halfway through and it just kind of it just goes into a load of old anime cliches um and sort of things you've seen before in other anime tv series or other anime films and it just it just falls apart unfortunately and i really wanted to like this film because i thought you know maybe you know i did like anime when i was a bit younger and maybe this will kind of give give me the gap between this sort of western and eastern cultures where i can kind of appreciate it but it was it was a chore to sit through for the most part there are some fun bits in it as i say the the um the kind of the, the graphics look great and i think there's sort of the design of iron man he looks very good and you know sort of all lit up and stuff like that uh the best scene in the movie for me uh are the kind of scenes involving the punisher who is um he's he's actually voiced by i better say i actually watched the dubbed version of them so i'm not a huge anime fan don't care i'm not into what into reading the subtitles this is a based on an american um subject so i'm going to watch the the dubbed version and the punisher is, is voiced by norman readers who you may know from the walking dead so that section to me is kind of fun he kind of um he sort of un has to sort of team up with the punisher for a sort of short amount of time and the punisher is only in this for about 10 minutes in about in about kind of in the middle of the film so i don't expect him to be in the whole film um and basically at this part in the film you've got sort of shield chasing after iron man and somehow they know that he's, he's teamed up with the punisher although that kind of doesn't really make sense about how they know that but there you go um and they send hawkeye and black widow after him and that sort of section where you've kind of got this fight between hawkeye and, and black widow versus the punisher and iron man that to me is the most interesting part of this this film was obviously it's, it's got four characters you know and it the, the motivations are there and it, it, that bit to me is making sense um but the rest of the film after that really kind of just goes off on its own thing it's kind of like has all these sort of lofty sort of um hyperbolic scientific ideas and that sort of thing but it just it just kind of crumples under its own weight of you know of, of kind of um Sort of techno babble and sort of and, and cliches ultimately so it was um a bit of a disappointment i have to say because i was kind of like, you know i'm pumped for iron man through it i'm sure who you are and i thought this might be that this might be a good precursor to sort of going and watch it um a couple of other bits i just wanted to sort of um we've touched on touch on really um the the voice acting as i say you've got normal readers playing um the Punisher, and to me, he was the, he was the best um, voice actor. I quite like War Machine as well. He, he 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 was quite good, but the guy who was playing Tony Stark, the way it was recorded to me, he just sounded like this guy was sort of sitting down on a you know on a sofa and was chilling out, and he was just sort of saying his lines. He just didn't seem, it just kind of didn't fit with the action on the screen. I mean, Tony Stark's flying around and kind of doing all this stuff, getting shot and blah blah, but he just the way the lines are delivered just didn't seem. Um, it was a reflection of what was happening on screen. You know, he looked like he was just sat there reading off a bit of paper, and you know, it was. I didn't like that. And some of the sort of the the, the other lines. I mean, it doesn't help. I don't think the writing is very good in this. To be quite honest with you, either some of the lines that are that um, 
that are on here. Now, I don't know if obviously this is a Japanese translation, obviously, we're talking about, but just don't, um, they're kind of clunky and kind of, they're not good to start with, but some of the lines that are delivered, again, it's just fairly poor. So this really is, is a, you know, it's only sort of a good film on the very, very surface of it, and, and it looks good, but other than you scratch the surface and get any sort of depth with it, I really don't think it, it really holds up. Um, and also, sort of, again, my, my, my big thing is kind of in movie logic, and, and I'll just give you an early example of what I mean by this. So the very early scenes, you've got this um, satellite sort of being taken off and, you know, everyone's sort of gathered there. You get all these mech warriors that are sort of, of turning up and, and blasting everything, but they're still carrying on with the satellite launch. If it's not aborted, I mean, I know it's only a, an animated movie, but, you know, if there's gun battles happening, you're going to abort the launch, aren't you? you you're not going to keep working away. It was just but stuff like that. And... Um, so I've got to be quite disappointed with this film, to be honest with you. I know it's not been out long, um, and I'd be very interested to hear other people's opinions of this. I did have a look on one. There's not a whole lot out there at the moment. So uh, let me know what you think about it. Um, I say, I'm going to give this one a four out of 10, and that's that's purely based on the aesthetics of this film, uh, and maybe this sort of the section with the Punisher, because that was, to me, that was the, really the only interesting um, sort, of, sort of bit on it, really. It's quite fun. You've got a little bit more bit of swearing in there, and you've got some... Um, you know, people get killed, you know, Punisher shoots people through the head and things like that. So it is a little bit violent. So it kind of, it's kind of maybe nice to see these Marvel characters in that sort of, um, that, that sort of like more adult theme stage. I'm not sure if it's meant to take place in the actual Marvel universe because you have sort of Jarvis, you know, it has the computer system and things like that. And he's, and uh, you've got like Iron Man referencing Captain America and things like that. So I'm not sure if this is actually supposed to take to take place in the same universe as the Marvel um, the Marvel films. I'm assuming it probably does, and it's just influenced by them. But you know, I'm not sure about that to be honest with you. Anyway, leave us a comment. Let me know what you think. Um, who is your favourite character in this show? I, I say I personally not the Punisher, although I would say having Norman Reedus the voice, it just made me think of Daryl Dixon all the time. So there you go. Anyway, look forward to seeing you next time. See you later.